Welcome to the Tradies in Business podcast with your hosts, Warwick Bidwell and Nicole Cox. Divert your phone and grab a brew as Waz and Nick unpack tips, tales, secrets and stuff-ups from guests both inside and outside your trade, helping educate and inspire you to break the cycle of gut-busting and money stress and create a true trade business. Howdy, howdy, listeners. How, I don't even know how to come in with a howdy ho. Is that what you said? <laughs> howdy hody. I'm thinking Woody from um, yeah. Toy Story. Reach for the sky. So, <laughs> hi, listeners. You have not tuned into some children's podcast or a really bad, um, well, it's not a sitcom because that's situational comedy. Do sitcoms even exist anymore, Coxie? I think there's some American ones probably floating around on Netflix and whatnot, but Australian sitcoms, I, oh, oh, we've been the last good with, one I remember. With uh, And I'm doing air quotes, listeners. We've been flooded with reality TV, which is completely not real. Either. I heard the most horrendous story about the latest uh, ridiculous um, challenge TV show in Australia the other night. Someone was saying about these epic fails with ice baths and snakes biting someone on the face. And oh, do you not watch that stuff? I don't watch it, by the way. But that's been around forever. Survivor, isn't it? Or I'm no, a celebrity. No, no. Get me out of here. Yes, that one. They were talking about yeah, that. Yeah, that's been but, around forever. But the latest round of it, apparently, there was some there was some pretty epic fails. I don't. My really? television is not plugged into the antenna, Coxie. Oh, I I watch. Mostly home renovation shows when the builder's not around because you're not allowed to watch that when the real builder's around because nobody ever does it right. I'm sure every other tradie in the world is very similar to the builder. They can't stand them. Yeah, that's the last thing they want to watch. So, listeners, you are listening to Tradies in Business and uh, this is Coxie and Woz coming at you with another episode on a Tuesday. A Tuesday. And we're not talking about television or reality today, although I could I could do a bit of a Chucky Norris here, Coxie. Come on, give me your best shot. So this whole reality TV, it's not real, people. That stuff oh, doesn't happen. Good one. And today, <laughs> Coxie and I want to address deadlines. Dun, dun, and, dun. Yeah. <laughs> and we've just come out of Christmas Surprise! And New Year's and the 1st of January's been and gone and all of a sudden January's slipping on by as well. Very quickly, isn't it? Yeah. So we've just passed a massive deadline, particularly for those of you who um, are busier in the lead up to Christmas where clients are, oh, I need this done by the 23rd and other primary contractors putting pressure on you as a subcontractor. It is a manic time of year and I must admit... I'm I'm often amazed at how quickly people forget about how wild November, December was for them. I think it's a bit like having a baby. <laughs> you know, within an hour or two after the baby, well, okay, maybe a, a few weeks after the maybe baby, you're like, oh, it wasn't that bad. Yeah, I could go again. Yeah. 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 It's, like, it's like a big night on the tiles. Yes, yes. I'm and never by the end of the next again. week, it's like, yeah, I'm ready to go. <laughs> Absolutely. Whereas the Sunday morning at 11.30 a.m. when you finally wake up, it's like, oh, my gosh, I'm never doing that again. I'm never dreaming. Next minute. So, yeah, Christmas, been and gone, deadline, panic, pandemonium, hysteria, all sorts of stuff happening just four weeks ago, Coxie. Mm, unbelievable. We had... Clients and members either on the verge of or in tears, mm. ready to burn out, break down, bust up, run away and join the circus, as long as it was mm. COVID approved. And uh, here we are mid-January, and I think a lot of people have forgotten that. Well, maybe we're just putting the, the ridiculous past behind us. Let's not think about some of those negative things. True, and I and I feel like... It's a fantastic example, Coxie, of an arbitrary deadline that we manufacture our own level of stress around those deadlines 
which really are arbitrary. I mean, looking back over, do, do this exercise, listeners, think back over the last five years or the last 12 months and think about all the deadlines that you were like peeking out about that you just felt so stressed about and the these deadlines were going to be just like almost incomprehensibly impossible to meet or deal with and you were never going to get everything done i mean things like moving into a new house or uh the kids starting school you're never going to be ready for that or i don't know your new baby arriving or uh, a staff member leaving or a project being delivered, like you name it. The level of, of stress and panic surrounding so many of these deadlines is often so great and it's based largely on fear mm. of what might happen if we miss the deadline or if we don't have everything done by the time this arbitrary date arrives. And... In all the years I've been coaching and podcasting, I I see people after those deadlines and it's almost never as bad as they thought it was going to be. And they had more time than they thought they were going to have mm. to do things. And it doesn't always work out for the best. It doesn't it rarely goes to plan or perfectly, but isn't that the same in everything in life, listeners? Just look at twenty twenty. How much of 2020 went to plan for you? So I just, I think people create a lot of anxiety and and uh, elevated emotion that is really unhelpful in actually meeting deadlines. It's ironic, really. So why do you think we do it? I think we're really conditioned to do this because I can't think of a single person I know that doesn't. And I'm intrigued by, is it the media is it the community is it impregnated in our heads in our brains and it's just a pattern that we automatically fall into without having any real conscious thought about it what is it that pushes us in that direction i'm absolutely a a, a panicker when a deadline approaches we've got some pretty empty <laughs> deadlines at the moment that we're feeling a little pressure around um and personally I have a couple of big deadlines over the next couple of weeks uh, that mean that I'm working extra hard to get things in place before those deadlines. I don't need to. I really don't. Nothing's actually going to change over after those deadlines. I'll have a couple of days where my attention won't be fully on what we do here at Tradies and Business, but other than that, nothing actually really changes. It's not like I couldn't make the time to fill those gaps anyway. So my, my question is, or my ponder is what makes us behave in that way? I, I'm a classic example of this. I love working with you, Coxie. <clears throat> <laughs> I throw myself open for. Was, we have this deadline. <laughs> we have to get all this stuff done. <laughs> we do. We absolutely do. And was us down here in the Tasmanian bubble with a broken coffee machine going, meh, it'll happen. <laughs> But I've been the same as you for many, many years, Coxie, and um, I think I still I still have those tendencies as well mm. uh, around particular things, and just because of some big events in my life in the last couple of years, especially, I've probably chosen a space where. I'm willing to accept what comes more. Not and not 100. percent I'm not standing here in a place of self righteous. Oh, you are so affection. lucky you picked yourself up there because I was coming in with the hard ones. Yeah, because as I said, there's still things that I get my knickers in a knot about, mm. um, and I get frustrated about things that don't work out the way I want them to. And um, I just think my relationship with time has probably changed a little bit in the last couple of years. So do you think that's what it comes down to, the relationship and the respect we have for time? I think that's a part of it. And I think I reckon, and look, listen, this is just my personal opinion based on observation of working with hundreds and hundreds of people over the last 13 years, um, my own self-work, getting feedback from fantastic mentors like Coxie here and other people that I actually pay money to, 
uh, to give me advice <laughs> and feedback, some of which I don't really like, so I stopped paying them. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, it's like, if you don't like my opinion, just stop paying me and I'll stop giving it. Uh and I, I think every individual is different. You know, we all have different relationships with time. We have different things that mm, I think result in that deadline panic, if mm. I could put a label on it. It's it's deadline panic or deadline fear. Mm. Um, I've done a lot of reading over the years about marketing and the, the granddaddy of marketing, which was actually a relative of Freud, the great mm. psychologist, and... Marketing really is a fantastic study of human psychology and I detest most of it because it is so manipulative and it it uses our human nature largely against us to cause us to do things or make decisions that if we'd stood back and been a little more self-reflective and a little more insightful, many of us wouldn't have done those things. We wouldn't have spent the money. We wouldn't have bought the Abmaster Pro 3000 because we would have actually used a different set of principles to make that decision than what marketers have become very, very good at is tapping into our human fear. Mm. You know, you think about back... Even a couple of hundred years ago, there was a lot of shit that could kill you. You know, there were, oh, diseases, Coxie. Fancy that. <laughs> we may have been through this before. But anyway, um, you know, we had like, I guess, proper wars and the depression and, you know, there was more health risks than now. I mean, we, we have incredible healthcare system, particularly here in Australia. Uh, and if you go even further back, you're at risk of... You know, being shot by a bush ranger or eaten by a tiger or a woolly mammoth or something. And so humans are hardwired with this fight, flight or freeze response, as are most animals, actually all animals. And that's, I reckon, Coxie, in my, my incredibly non-humble opinion, is the root of all of it. It comes back to that, that fear-based response, that self-preservation. And a mm. deadline just triggers that fight, flight, or freeze. And I reckon we both see that in many of our members where they freeze, which is mm. indecisiveness, avoidance, uh, just you know, not doing the things that they know they should be doing. They know they should do a cash flow forecast before um, their new operations manager starts in three months. They know they should get all of their bookkeeping up to date. They know they should paint the room before the baby's actually born or whatever it is, right? Um, but they freeze. They're just paralyzed because of that fear. Other people go to fight. They go to aggression. Now, they don't go around swinging punches at people, but they have that sort of anger and heightened resistance and pushback and they become a little more aggressive than perhaps they normally would. And then other people have the, the flight you know, they've got that panicked, manic <laughs> way about them of just, uh, maybe this is you, Coxie, of just madly trying to get absolutely everything done as quickly as I possibly can. That's what I reckon. Hence my sexy fingers over the last couple of days because <laughs> I'm brushing everything and nothing's working. For those but of you I... that don't know what Coxie means by her sexy fingers, she doesn't paint little, you know, mouths on them and make them do dances around a pole. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. <sighs> They're very clean. No, sexy figures, they just don't work. Everything goes wrong. Everything I touch, I break. Mm -hmm. It's been like that for days now. But that, that's totally it. It's a rush, rush, rush to get stuff done. Some of this, yes, some of what we're working on at the moment is time critical. A lot of that can be delegated. A lot of it just needs to get done. And prioritizing that, taking the time to understand what the priorities are and working to the priorities is the biggest opportunity we have to have an impact over what gets done or doesn't get done at the end by the deadline. I think also uh, learning to reflect and understand what our behaviors are like during these times of heightened stress. Cortisol, which is one of those things inside our body that makes us react in certain ways without us even understanding what's going on, is a very powerful 
res- trigger to response. It really is. And I think that we all have our own response patterns that happen every single time we're in these triggering situations. You've just been through them, fight, flight, or being just totally polarised and not moving at all. Uh, and we see it consistently with our members and we understand and we try to help gain some clarity and push you in the direction that you need to go to get through the actual work that needs to be done before your deadline. And I think that's the hardest thing to push through is the fog that comes because you're so busy being worried about the deadline. And the fog means you take your eye off the ball and the stuff that really critically needs to be done by that point is generally the stuff that I, that gets forgotten about. Let's have a look at Christmas. So had I had a great session with one of our tradiepreneurs this week who absolutely put his hand up in ownership and spoke about how he allowed himself to get that busy and that rushed into Christmas that despite our prompting, despite our work with him around, he didn't do all of the things that needed to be done so that he could have a rest over Christmas. So now he's feeling really, I guess, unenthusiastic about the beginning of this year. He's not ready for work. He doesn't want to be at work. He needs a break. He's exhausted. He worked his butt off off last year. Yeah. So he's feeling ripped off (laughs) and dissatisfied and a little narky and not happy. And you know, great client, he's able to put his hand up in ownership and say, you know what, I understand that I didn't do what was necessary to create that time for myself. And now we have an opportunity to move forward and make sure that never happens again because we have to get to that point of understanding what we've not done or understanding mm. where we let ourselves down mm. so that we can make those changes moving forward. And that can be hard to do on your own. It can be hard to see what you're dropping the ball on. And I guarantee every one of us listening dropped the ball on something building up to Christmas. Self-reflection is is a really hard reflex to develop. We are so externally driven as a society these days. Again, my opinion, listeners, um, and based on observation, but we are, our mood is so heavily influenced by what we see on the news channels, on social media, um, just based on what other people say, I, I, I watch examples of this at my gym, uh, you know, within our friend network here and people will say things as though it's a categoric truth and they don't do any fact checking. They don't do any, um, testing or <laughs> peer review, which is a, an awful, overused term on social media and I see people touting that as the way to to say whether a science um, theory is fact or not because it was peer reviewed well that just means your mates agreed with you That's who <laughs> I love a good are. peer review <laughs> it's like oh this is a peer reviewed paper it's like so how did you pick your peers <laughs> did they all just agree with you and they said yeah it was great science paper mate the earth really is flat I love it. That's how I do all of my research. I ask my friends and if they agree with me, they get to keep being my friends and that's my peer review. See, I I think some of this comes down to, particularly for for you listening to this podcast um, and for our clients and members, I think we should be seeking more people that disagree with us, that challenge Mm. us and that actually force us to have a a stop and a rethink and go, hang Mm. on. Is this deadline actually as as catastrophic or critically important as I'm making it out to be? Are these things that I'm experiencing fight, flight or freeze about, are they actually likely to come about? Are they are they really, you know, what's the chances that they're going to happen? And have I come up with a battle plan to minimize the risk of those things happening? And even if they do happen, what's the worst possible scenario? What's the worst case outcome? And in business, no one's going to die. So it's really not that bad, Coxie. Well, they might die if you don't do your health and safety properly. But- well, sure. I know someone's <laughs> going to burn me on that point, for sure. That's why I make it now. <laughs> I, I think there's a great thread to follow, and I've lost it now that I was making fun of you. <laughs> Can you rewind and say all of those things again it's, for me, please? So you trigger that thread. I, I think people should be seeking those who disagree with us to challenge us, to get us to stop and fact check. You know, is it true? 
is it actually going to be as bad as we think? Because in retrospect, hindsight, all that wonderful stuff, in my life even, and the people, many, many, many of the people that I just talk to, never mind about actually work with, it rarely works out as bad as we thought it was going to, even if we miss the deadline. That's what I was going to say. I was going to say that many of us, me very much so, catastrophize anyway. It's a big part of our human nature. We immediately look at what worst case scenario is. Now, ordinarily, I'd tell you, try to ignore that worst case scenario. And yet, if you confront it early on in the situation, you have a look at what worst case scenario is. So worst case scenario is before my big deadline next week, I've got one on Tuesday. I need to have everything or in my head, I need to have a list of jobs ticked off before next Tuesday morning. If I don't get them ticked off by next Tuesday morning, what's worst case scenario? They don't get done. <laughs> That's you for me. The next day. I have to give them to somebody else to do so they're done on time. Okay, I've got people that can help me with that. All right, it's not terrible. I think I'll be okay. But maybe that's the point. Maybe take that time, have a look at worst case scenario, understand what that looks like. Okay, so my team member starts in another three months' time. I've had a look at worst case scenario. I don't have enough funds to pay them. Well, what can I do now to actually make the change to ensure that I can pay them? Because I need that person on board. You, you, there's so much power in looking at what could possibly go wrong and putting steps in place to catch that ball if it does fall from the air. Many of us get so distracted by the fear itself mm. that we neglect to work on the the facts. We we're so engrossed in the feelings of stress and overwhelm and panic and flight and and aggression and blame and victimhood and all the other stuff that comes out of so many of these deadline scenarios and Christmas is that fantastic example that is fresh in many of your minds listening to this podcast that we get blinded by that we're literally blinded by fear it's a common saying anyone who works with animals particularly you know horses or performance animals um, once once an animal is spooked and is is working from lizard brain that's not a very good time to try and teach it anything. Now, as humans, we have this fantastic self-reflection and insight power. You know, we have this insight. We actually have the ability and the capacity, all of us, to stop and take a breath and reflect and go, hang about, I think I'm experiencing something that's loosely defined as being shit scared. Hmm. Uh is this going to be the best way for me to move forward and achieve the things that I want? Hmm. And just that ability is what sets humans apart from the rest of the animal kingdom. Mm. We don't have to go into survival mode. We do, and we will continue to do that. And I think it's just exercising that insight muscle to be able to say, okay, I'm really scared that I'm not going to get everything, as I do air quotes, or all the stuff done by X, Y, Z deadline. The next thing you should do is actually, you know, go for a walk outside, have a cup of coffee, go hit the punching bag, whatever, and then come back and say, righto, let's look at the facts. Now let's go to Logic Brain and map it out. And if you haven't sat down and written out the things or the stuff and turned that big grandiose catastrophizing language into a specific set of actions and goals and gateways that you have determined need to be done and then assess well okay how how important is this really to the overall game that we're playing here then you're just going to keep spiraling and it's going to actually achieve exactly what you're afraid of because that's what happens. If we focus on the fear, we actually end up manifesting it. There's a good book around at the moment that I haven't read yet but I've had enough snippets to know it's a good one. It's called Fear is Not the Boss of You and it's, it, it really is um, aimed at women. It's written by a woman for women and just that concept, it full stop, 
the the line, fear is not the boss of you, is a great uh, point to remember on a day-to-day basis. What actually happens if we say yes to the opportunities that come our way instead of being polarised by the fear? What actually happens if we acknowledge the fear by saying, you know what, I'm actually feeling really shit scared about not getting this stuff done by next Tuesday? Great. That's wonderful, Warwick. I'm I'm sorry that you're not feeling real good about next Tuesday and how much you have to do between now and then. Let's have a look at what needs to be done. And I think, Coxie, what if you don't get it done? I, I say this with a degree of fear to my wife sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and I've we've we've agreed on my intent around that before I actually used it. And so in those moments of fear and panic, I will say, honey, so what? So what? And I don't mean that of, oh, so what? I'm, I'm saying it from a place of, okay, so what? So what then? So we miss the deadline. So we don't get this done. So we don't uh, have the all of the safety procedures written before the employee starts. So what then? Well, then, I don't know, I guess we'll have to finish it at nights or we'll have to find another way to get it. Maybe there's a template someone else has. It just sparks a, a, a more logic-based thought process. You know, you don't get everything done by next Tuesday. Everything's not in place and you don't have everything and and... I don't know, I'm trying to think of like big grandiose lists that I've heard from people without incriminating anybody, but, uh, you know, you don't have everything done by Christmas. So what? So what then? Are you going to go broke? And if you are, great. Now we can come up with a plan for that. Mm -hmm. Because the common thing is, well, if I don't get this done, then that doesn't happen, this doesn't happen, and then I can't send the invoices, then I won't get paid, and then that's it. Cash flow is stuffed and we're going to go broke. Mm -hmm. Cool. Where my wife works at the hospital, they have a term name it up and uh, I'm listening to a fantastic audio book at the moment about negotiation and a similar thing it's about labeling it and when we start to label these things when we label our fears when we name it up then you can start to actually pull that apart and use our our human gift of insight to fact check come up with a plan and then maybe start to be a little bit more critical about well okay probably don't have to have the employee handbook printed and bound on 220 GSM paper um, and, you know, laminated and signed off in triplicate. Maybe if I just have it all typed up, that'll do. Because that's 80% of the job done. And then we can reduce a little bit of pressure there. I think so often we just cling to that fear, Coxie, because it, I don't know, it feels familiar. It's a blanket. It protects us, I suppose. It's ironic, really, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's quite mind-blowing when you talk it out. And I really want to point out that if you're unable to do this for yourself in your trade business, you've got two awesome business coaches in Warwick and myself, braggy brag, that would be more than happy to help you do this in your business. This is a big part of what we do. It's poking people in the chest when we can see that their eyes are glazing, they're reaching panic mode, their arms are flailing, they don't really know what's going to happen next and they're busily trying to work on the thing they deem to be important, we can actually see there's something they're missing. Uh, Our job is to help you with this. It's to poke you in the chest, kick you up the bum, give you a big warm cuddle, whatever it takes to get you moving forward on what you actually need to get done, finding your action list because, as we always say, small steps leads to, I was going to say big change, but I'm going to say success at the end of the day. Little steps, taking little steps each day, making one little step towards where you want to go or one little step towards the change you want to make or one little step to ticking off that thing before your deadline will get you to where you need to be so that you can be comfortable in what you're doing. So if you need some help, you know where to find us. We will be here ready with our big pointy fingers ready to come (laughs) to the chest. Cut your nails short. I have. I have. We're ready. Yeah, we um, we support a lot of trade business owners just like you through these issues. Um, Coxie and I had about a half hour um, coaches meeting this morning discussing a couple of our um, high level clients and where they're at at the moment and uh, just swapping notes on how to help move them through 
you know, an issue like this one that we've discussed in today's podcast, or it might be looking at recruitment or, you know, systems implementation, whatever it is. So um, if you are feeling a bit of fight, flight or freeze, if you suffer from a bit of deadline fear, then uh, give us a shout. Uh, We have a solution for just about anybody. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're seeing some amazing change made by people. And it is just, it literally makes my face leaky when we hear from our clients that they've made change and this is what their life looks like now. And it Mm -hmm. is just the impact on their family and their personal life is just mind blowing. And it doesn't require massive workload or anything else. So. Give us a yell. Yell. <laughs> Not literally. Well, you could type in all caps. We well, could with an exclamation mark or two. Yeah. That would make us very aware that you're yelling that you need help right now. So get in touch. Um, Otherwise, uh, if you're not in the group, go join up. There's a bunch of awesome tradies in there and um, we're going to bring you some more podcast content around getting you unstuck. I think we should end with a plug for the cash flow challenge because oh, yeah. it started yesterday. Crumbs. I really hope you can't hear the blower that's going off next door. No. It started but. yesterday, <laughs> but you haven't missed out. You still have the opportunity to join us in our cash flow challenge because we have structured this challenge in a way that you can go back and watch the webinars at a time that suits you any time in the next month or so you still have the opportunity to come and join us in the cash flow challenge. So to find the cash flow challenge, just head on over to fa- our Facebook page. It's Tradies in Business. We have a Facebook page. If you're in the group, you'll find it in there as well. Either way, you will find the opportunity to join the challenge. Come and have some fun with Warwick and I. If you've ever been concerned about the money that is or isn't in the bank, if you check your bank balance more than once a week, if you are not sure if you're going to be able to take a holiday during the year, if you're sick of the 3 a.m. wake-ups, this challenge will help you iron out a lot of what's going with on with your cash flow. It will help get you uh, understanding and prepared for what may come this year. There's some great resources that we will be sharing with our members. Um, it's jam-packed full of good stuff. You missed a great session yesterday, but as I said, you can go back and watch it. So please, if this sounds like something you need in your life, you know where to find us. Get on it. You've been listening to the Tradies and Business podcast with Warwick Bidwell and Nicole Cox. Find out more about today's guest, tools for your trade business and other cool stuff at tradiesandbusiness.com.au.